So I wanted to tell you a little bit today about um, domains, codomains, and ranges of functions. I've had quite a few questions about this, so I just want to go through some of the ideas behind what we mean by the codomain and the range. And for everything that we're going to be looking at in general, we're going to be looking at real valued functions. Okay. The first example I'm going to give you here actually isn't a real valued function, but it gives you an idea of the sort of um, flexibility that we can have when we define a function. Okay? So a function, all it does is it takes two sets and it assigns the elements of one set to elements in the second set. Okay? So of course those could be sets like the real numbers or the complex numbers, which we'll see later, um, or they could be discrete elements. So for instance, we could have a function which maps us from the set of students let's say we have five students, to the set of tutorial sections. Maybe we have four tutorial sections. Okay? So it might be that there are four possible tutorial sections, and we have five possible students here. And as long as we don't have one student being assigned to multiple tutorials, we can define a function here. Okay? So what the function definition means is for each value of the student, i.e. student 1, student 2, student 3, student 4, student 5, where this is the domain of the function, it's going to map these into various tutorials. So for instance, we might have a function which maps student 1 into tutorial 1, student 2 also into tutorial 1, student 3 into tutorial 4, student 4 into tutorial 4, and student 5 into tutorial 3. Okay, that's a perfectly well-defined function. However, what we notice here is that, in fact, tutorial 2 is not within the, uh, the value of the tutorials that we're mapping students into. Okay? So what this actually means is that, in this case, tutorial 2 is not within the range of this function. Okay? I've got to be a little bit careful here. Tutorial 2 is in the codomain. Okay? What this really means is the set of possible um, mappings which we could have had from the domain into our larger set. So this whole thing here, all of this, tutorial 1, tutorial 2, two 3 and 4, this is the codomain. Okay. However, for the particular function which we've got here, tutorial 2, although it is in the codomain, it is not in the range because none of the, uh, the students here get mapped into tutorial 2, i.e. none of the students are going to tutorial 2. Okay, so there's an example of a function on a discrete set of objects within a set. Okay? But generally we're not interested in sets of this sort, we're interested in sets like the real numbers. So let's look at an example like that. So in this case, we want a map which takes us from the reals to the reals. This is a real valued function. It means if we give it a, a number in the reals, it's going to output another number in the reals. Okay? So in this case, this is the codomain. And depending on the function, the domain is going to be some subset of the reals. Okay? So for instance, if we had a function defined as f of x equals, well, let's say 3 plus x, and we could define this for x in the reals. Well, in this case, x takes any value in the reals, and so the domain is the real numbers. And of course, the output can also be any number in the reals. It's just going to be 3 larger than the input number. So in this case, the domain is the reals, the range is also the reals, and the codomain is always going to be the reals in general for what we're talking about here. Okay? But here the domain and the range are the same. Okay. How about a different function? So here we have a very simple linear function, f of x is 3 plus x. How about we have something else? Let's look at this. How about we have the example f of x equals x squared. Well, in this case, x can be any real number, which means that the domain of this function is still the reals. But of course, this can't give us um, any negative numbers. 
Okay, this is always going to give us a positive number. Okay, so in this case, the domain is reals, and the range is positive reals, including zero. Okay, because of course, when you give it zero, it can give us zero. However, the codomain is still the reals. Okay, what we found here is that let's draw it like this. If this is the reals, and I'm going to draw it just very schematically, of course you should think of the reals as a, uh, an ordered line, but if this is the, the reals, what we've got is a map from the reals to the reals, but in fact, with this particular choice of the function, we find that the values, all of the values of the reals, get mapped only to the positive reals, only to the positive real numbers. Okay? If this is the set of negative real numbers, then all of the numbers here in the reals are only mapped under this function to the positive real numbers. Okay? We could, of course, have a domain which isn't just the reals. So, for instance, if we had f of x equals the square root of x, then, of course, we can't give that negative numbers, so we can't take the square root of a negative number if we're thinking of real value functions. Um, and so, in that case, the domain itself would then be the positive real numbers. Okay? So this is just the idea that the codomain in general will just be the real numbers for what we're interested in. We're interested in real value functions. So the codomain is the real numbers, but the range is the set of numbers that you get when you apply the function to the domain of the function. Okay? So in this case, the domain of the function is the reals. If you apply the function to any real number, if f of x equals x squared, then you're only going to get positive numbers out. Therefore, the range is the positive real numbers, but the codomain was all of the real numbers, which is uh, a much, which is a larger set than the range in this case. Okay, so that's a couple of examples. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I will answer as soon as possible. Okay, very good. See you all soon.